sometimes these days I hear the idea that religion hinders one's freedom, that religion cramps one's lifestyle, that it's an oppressive force. Sometimes even Catholics can be ashamed to talk about religion to each other or to their friends. And some believe their reputation might suffer a big blow if they're known they had a strong faith, and so they hide it. I've heard some people say, oh, I don't go to church, but I'm a very spiritual person. My experience of working in parishes for the last 25 years has shown me that religion doesn't hinder us or cramp us in any way. Living with a strong faith in God brings us the true happiness that we can't find elsewhere. And that's why Paul wrote in the second reading, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. In other words, he's saying, I want you to be happy, always happy in the Lord. I repeat, what I want is your happiness. And notice where he says that we will find our happiness. We find our happiness in the Lord. We will find our happiness by living the Christian life. The joy and the happiness in the Lord that we celebrate today is symbolized by lighting the rose-colored candle on the Advent wreath today instead of a purple one, and is symbolized by wearing of rose vestments today instead of purple vestments. I would like to recall a number of times when you see Jesus being happy and joyful. So think about, did Jesus feel cramped and hindered when he was proclaiming the good news? Well, not according to what we discover in the Gospels. In John 15, 11, we read, Jesus, uh, we read how Jesus says, I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus was joyful and wanted his disciples to share his joy. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. The Gospels don't mention emotions very much, but I want us to read between the lines and we can think of Jesus attending many dinners. There's the one given to him by Matthew and Levi or after he called him at Zacchaeus' house, there was dinner at Lazarus, Martha, and Mary's house. And Jesus would have been relaxed and joyful amongst his friends. Think of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with just five loaves and of bread and two fish. I can imagine the joy in Jesus as he sees the disbelief of the disciples and the people turn into awe and wonder as they experience God's generosity. Think of the joy in Jesus as he sees the change in the paralyzed man, the blind man, the lepers, and the many others who are healed by him. At Cana, Jesus changed about 500 liters of water into wine so that the wedding guests would continue to enjoy themselves, and it was wine of the best vintage. That was a lot of wine, but we must remember that at that time a wedding celebration lasted about a week and explains why so much wine was needed. And we can see Jesus smiling, being joyful, as he sees the joy of the wedding guests there. So the first step to become happy in the Lord is to give up sin so that we can live a life of grace with the Lord. In the Gospel today, three times people asked John the Baptizer, what should we do? Each time he told him to give up something and not to be greedy. So our journey of conversion is a journey of from wanting and being greedy and possessive to, to be unselfish. Giving up sin means changing an attitude of selfishness and entitlement to the joy of being connected and wanted and loved by all. And that was the journey John the Baptizer wanted his listeners to make. And that's the journey that we are challenged to make this Advent. 
so that we will have true joy and happiness to celebrate Christmas rather than just to have a, a secular feast. When we turn our backs on the attitude of selfishness and we follow the Lord, it doesn't mean that we will never again have trouble or difficulties. Of course we will. We will have ups and downs as long as we live, but we will have an inner peace in the Lord and find our happiness in the Lord. I just want to give two examples of being happy in the Lord in spite of enormous difficulties in an extremely challenging situation. I doubt that I could be equally happy in such a difficult situation, but they are examples to us of being happy in the Lord. The first example is of Father Maximilian Kolbe. He was in one of the Nazi concentration camps during World War II. He volunteered for the death chamber in the place of one of his fellow prisoners who had a family. And the jailers reported that whereas the death chambers were usually places of despair and cursing, in this case, when Father Maximilian Colby was in the death chamber, the condemned men were singing, were singing hymns. The second example is Archbishop Oscar Romero. He was the Archbishop of El Salvador. He was asked by a newspaper reporter if he was aware that people wanted to kill him. And he replied, you can tell them that they are wasting their time. They can kill a bishop, but they cannot kill the people of God, the church. If I am killed, I will rise again in the people of El Salvador. And as we know, Archbishop Romero was martyred. I'm sure that you agree that these are very difficult and challenging examples of being happy in the Lord. And they remind us, as Paul reminds us today, that God wants us to be happy. The Lord wills us to be happy. Since the day we were baptized, we've been the sons and daughters of God. And the words of our first reading from the prophet Zephaniah are fulfilled in the lives of each one of us from the day on that day that we were baptized. Listen to these words again. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The prophet continues. He will rejoice over you, that's God. God will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. God will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. Isn't that an extraordinary image? God will sing joyfully because of you, because of each one of us here today. And let us imagine God rejoicing over each one of us on the day that we were baptized because God is renewing us by his love. John the baptizer told his listeners that he baptized with water but that Jesus was coming after him and you had baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And when each of us were baptized, the Holy Spirit came down upon us. Each of us has been touched by God. God put his seal on us when we were baptized. So why be unhappy? Our faith in God brings us joy as we discover our purpose, as we discover meaning in life. So when some people say, oh, religion hinders one's freedom, oh, religion cramps our lifestyle, oh, religion is an oppressive force, we can remind them that our faith in God is a liberating force. It's liberating us from unhappiness and helping us to find our joy in the Lord. And so say again and again the words of St. Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice.